Why do bodybuilders avoid eating bread? It may have less to do with what's in the bread and more to do with what we typically eat bread with. Check out this clip from Dr. Andrew Chappelle, six-time British bodybuilding champion and researcher for more insights. Absolutely, and you, you noted they were consuming cereals, tubers, fruits and veggies in the study. Um, you don't see a lot of bread on the menu here. Is that, is that something that's uh, just you know a holdover in the bodybuilding community? Is that anything around you know gluten or digestive issues or any of that kind of stuff? I mean, yeah, I, I think you touched on a few things that are that are quite um, quite nice ideas. What it could be, it could be a holdover from uh, the bodybuilding sort of community. There, there's a culture around sort of not really consuming bread um i've never really understood why but one of the reasons might be it's what you eat bread with so maybe but bodybuilders don't like to eat too much fat in their diet and i guess you put spreads on uh, breads or you eat processed meats with breads don't you or you tend to have like preserves like jams and things with breads and sure. you don't really you don't really see a lot of these things in in the bodybuilders diet so maybe that's one of the reasons i mean gluten potentially i mean there's there's a podcast to be had in itself on that sort of subject. Yeah, does it, sure, does it not sure. bloat you? Um, I mean, maybe they don't want to take the, the chance with it as well with, with it bloating them. Um, so, so maybe that's what it is. But in terms of the, the foods that they're eating, yeah, you've, you've mentioned a couple of them. They are the, the bodybuilding staples that you'd actually expect would be in the, in their diet. So again, it's tubers, um, whole grains, uh, dairy is largely from things like whey protein, eggs. Um, there's some um, other root vegetables in there as well. But actually, if you look at the actual diversity of the diet, then you're only sort of seeing about 12 to say sort of 13 different food items across the sort of course of the diet. So the diet is kind of limited. It's kind of it's kind of bland what the bodybuilder is having, but. I mean, maybe it, maybe it works for them, or well, certainly I've done, I've done it a lot myself. In it, for sure. I was going to I was going to mention that as well. In terms of is that sort of practicality? In terms of if you're going to be calculating energy intake and calories, it's just easier to stick to like a smaller set of foods to be able to to gauge that. I, do you know what? I think you've actually again you've hit the nail on the head. I think there is a practicality aspect of eating similar things every single day. There's a practicality in terms of calculating energy intake. If you've got a diet which is more diverse and there's more margin for error in terms of macronutrients deviating from day to day and we know you can get metabolic adaptations from say a calorie deficit of, deficit of around about 80 calories so which is nothing, if you've right? got yeah which which is nothing so you could easily get that from having a more diverse diet you can imagine so maybe it's a practicality in that respect there is a whole bodybuilding culture around the idea of being hardcore though so this this notion of suffering eating broccoli and chicken you know all that sort of stuff so For sure. that's part of it as well so yeah I, th I think that's maybe what it is I, that's what i would say but certainly these people are trying to um etch out margins of half a percent and if it means that maybe they stick to certain food types throughout the the course of a diet and that means that their macros are the same day in day out and they don't have deviations and that maybe helps them then then maybe that's one of the reasons. Well. How much protein do the best of the best bodybuilders actually aim for? Well, Dr. Andrew Chappelle will share his research findings with you here in a moment. But remember, context is key here. If you're a physique-focused athlete, then you can certainly aim for similar levels. However, if you're just trying to increase your muscle mass and you're a recreational trainee, it's probably not the right context for you. The top end there will likely be around one gram of protein per pound body weight protein intake side of things you know what was the sure. uh, differences there amongst the the placers and the non-placers okay so the headlines on that here are i mean it's a high protein diet as you probably imagine we're looking at around about three grams per kilogram of body weight is what guys are um, taking in in terms of protein intake and um, the females slightly less uh, around about 2.7 grams per kilogram of body weight but it's still a really large um, protein intake the guys that don't place slightly less again about 2.7 but you're only talking about 0.3 of a gram and again it's a case of well does that really matter in the the sort of grand scheme of, uh, scheme of things i mean we know about protein synthesis and if if you once you reach that sort of leucine threshold then you can't synthesize protein uh, turn on that machinery anymore we we know about retaining nitrogen balance so once you go past a certain threshold then um, 
you, you're you're not losing any less night so you're not losing muscle tissue so I wouldn't suspect that the difference between the guys that placed and didn't place that that little bit of protein made that much of a difference but certainly these people they're, they're consuming a high protein diet because we know it keeps muscle tissue on their frame and uh, there's also that sort of satiating aspect as well and then there's the culture thing I mean but everyone knows that protein is what you need to uh, to build to build tissue which um, leads us on to our last macronutrient and if we've got a high protein diet and we've got a high carbohydrate diet, then what the bodybuilders certainly in this study seem to be doing was prioritizing those two nutrients over fat. So we're not really seeing a high fat intake in this population that we're, uh, we're looking at. So it's, it's less in some cases than 0.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. So people consume in, say, between, in some cases, 30 to, say, 50, 60 grams of fat a day. So, so not a lot for the, uh, the dieting athlete. And is that something, uh, you know, you mentioned before sort of some differences between, you know, American bodybuilders versus whether it's UK or European bodybuilders and the fat intake side of things. Can you uh, touch on that? Yeah, it's, it's not that common for, uh, for the fat intakes to be as, um, as low as that. So, I mean, there's, there's some recommendations out there just now that suggest something in a regional around about say 20 to sort of 30% of the diet should, uh, should come from fat for the, uh, the diet and bodybuilder. That's, um, the, the Helms paper that sort of suggests that evidence-based paper but when you start looking into the uh, the research on it you sort of find that it's a little bit sketchy and that the reasons for having such a, a high fat diet for people that are largely engaged in engaged in resistance training don't seem to necessarily um, infer that they need a diet as high as that but there are instances where people are consuming low amounts so there's a couple of papers again from the early 90s where you'll get reports of people consuming around about 10% of their diet coming largely from uh, from fat for bodybuilding. But this is kind of a little bit rare that you don't usually see people consuming fat intakes quite as uh, quite as low as that. But again, I would sort of defer to um, the athletes themselves and say, okay, on the stage, these men and women, they're extremely muscular, um, extremely ripped, fantastic shape, lots of muscle on their frame, despite their uh, their really low fat intake so it didn't seem to be um working against them in that respect and, and maybe it's something to do with the the types of fats maybe once they've got that threshold of essential fatty acids then they're, they're okay that that might be it in andrew's research and his cohort of elite bodybuilders they didn't consume much red meat or egg yolks is that because they're trying to reduce their dietary fat intake is that because they're afraid of the cholesterol in some of those foods let's take a closer look and see what Andrew has to say. Because in reading sure. your, your paper, you know, the, the lack of red meat consumption and egg yolk consumption sure. amongst the bodybuilders is definitely one yeah. that, you know, is, is it that fear of fat intake that they're typically worried about? Is there still like a hangover of cholesterol and saturated fat? Or is it just more perhaps on that, you know, caloric intake and fat intake side of things where we don't see as much consumption? Again, I think you've, you've pointed out a couple of things that are probably going on. I mean, bodybuilding is so surrounded by the, the lower of um the the whole sport the the culture of the sport i mean so it's it's a bit like that rocky thing where people eat raw eggs don't they because they've seen rocky doing it and that's that's survived in um, pop pop culture for like 50 years or however long that movie's been but yeah um bodybuilders you you read flex magazine that says don't eat the egg yolks and then uh, that stays around for like the next 20 30 years but because they think that the cholesterol is going to be bad for their health. But I think some of it's that. The other side of it is, as you say, it's, it's caloric intake. So if you're trying to prioritize um, having a higher carbohydrate intake and a um, higher protein intake, then you need to make adjustments elsewhere. So you need to uh, you need to bring the uh, the fat intake down to sort, of, um, to sort of marry up with that. I mean, what I would say, though, the suggestion that you could probably get away having a slightly lower protein intake so maybe not necessarily as high as that sort of three grams you can maybe hedge your bets and go bets and go down to about 2.5 grams per kilogram of body weight when you're cutting and put some of those extra calories back into the um back into the fats or even if you wanted you could maybe see how high you could push the uh, the, the carbohydrates for that extra energy content 